What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Scale Speaks podcast. We are in the building one more time. We are back at the table, ladies and gentlemen. Thank y'all so much again for joining me here. We are getting a whole new setup. We are getting a lot of things really hooked up to make sure we're giving you the best show possible week by week. Man, this is so good. We are on episode 14. I apologize for the delay. I apologize for not getting this in front of y'all a lot quicker, but with growth and with new things comes some education, comes some learning, comes some growing pains. But as we continue, we will get better and make sure that this is a show that you will be proud of to share with your friends and family. So again, thank y'all from the bottom of my heart for joining me again. This is episode 14 of the Scale Speaks podcast. And what this what this episode is, is just a story. <laughs> this episode is a quick, simple story of just me embarrassing myself. <laughs> Just completely making somewhat of an ass of myself. But that is the that is the story and the why and the essence of this podcast. We talk about mistakes, we talk about growth, we talk about things that you do well, things that you don't do so well, and we find joy and pleasure in all of it. So let's backtrack a little bit. Number one. I feel like I need to just do, I feel like I need to do better (laughs) because let's, let's get to it. My boy, Ryan, shout out to Ryan. He was my assistant manager at the store that I was working at or had been working at for the last couple years. Uh, He was my most recent assistant there. He's been here about a year and a half, and he just went on to move to a different store and become the manager there. So it's all love. It's all blessings. We hope for the best in his next role. But his last day working was this past Saturday. So he was like, hey, you know, because y'all showed me so much love, because y'all cared about me so much, because of y'all accepting me for, you know, who I am and making it cool for me to be myself, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rent a boat, a pontoon, and we're going to just hang out on the water. We're going to go to the lake. We're just going to rent a boat. We're going to kick it for a couple hours just like we have been in the dealership. A boat, a pontoon. (laughs) I was over here like, what? What the hell is a pontoon? What is a boat? Like, what? First off, I got to get better just because when you when you surround yourself by people that Im- that make you improve, you find ways to just get better naturally and just expose yourself to a lot more that you have not exposed yourself to prior. I've never been on a pontoon. I've never been on a boat. I know how to swim. I've been in water, pools, whatever, but I've never been on a legitimate boat for like party and chill purposes. I've never done it. Ryan has been doing it for quite some time. My other assistant, Matt, if I'm not mistaken, his parents have or had a boat. So he's like, oh, this is cool. Yeah, it's dope. And I'm over here like, I don't know what to expect because I've never done this before. I'm like, all right. (laughs) So the first thing is like, all right, do I go? Like, yeah, I got to go. It's a boat. I've never been on a boat before. I got to go. Like, why wouldn't you go? It's a boat. So I'm like, all right, let's let's go. So it's me. Let me see who else out there. It was Corey, Dante, Wes, me, Matt, Ryan, Dee Dee. And I think that was a uh, make sure I don't exclude anybody. I think that was it. There's only like six or seven of us. So. We were like, all right, cool. What are we doing? So Sunday morning, we're going to go out about eight in the morning. We're going to jump on the boat. And I'm like, all right, cool. Wes. Wes was like, yo, they got jet skis over at the lake. Now, I ain't been on a boat before. But I was like, yo, I've been on a jet ski. (laughs) I've definitely been on a jet ski before. And I was like, you know what? Yo, check if they got those. Check if they got jet skis. If they got jet skis at the lake, we doing it. It's at we're def- 
I don't care what the price is. I don't care. What, I don't care how long. I don't care what liability waivers, whatever. We're doing it. We go. We're hitting the water. So, Ryan, obviously familiar with the area, is like, yeah, they got jet skis. Me and Wes, like, yeah, we yeah, we getting jet skis. It's it's happening. It's going down. We're definitely getting jet skis. So we're like, the whole week before going on to the boat, we're not. We're we're doing what we're supposed to do, but all we're really talking about is just like, yo, forget the boat. The boat is nothing. We going on the jet skis. We better like speeding. We we making so many jokes at the dealership just talking about like, yo, we about to have a real good time on these jet skis. So we're out here tripping about it. Having a good old time. Just thinking about what that water going to feel like, what it's going to be like. And we're going early in the morning before it gets extremely hot. So this is going to be really fun for us. <laughs> Sunday morning comes and, you know, obviously. We get to the boat first because the, the, the dock for the jet skis doesn't open until nine o'clock. So we get there at eight. So Ryan's driving a boat. We get there. And immediately, like the second we hit the water, we just start hitting shots. <laughs> Jello shots, couple beers. We are already starting to turn up. And I'm like, this is cool. It's just, you know, I got swim trunks on. I think I had a T-shirt. I don't know. I just had my swim trunks on, some pool shoes, and my prescription Ray-Bans. And for those that don't have prescription Ray-Bans, you're living wrong. There's nothing like... I wear contacts. I wear glasses. But the, the contacts, shades, combination... It works really well when you're just kind of like out, just driving or whatever. But if you're doing something like active, like jet skiing, for example, prescription sunglasses are just the way to go because you put it on. Everything is clear and you just in the water with some. Honestly, like I said, get some prescription glasses. If you're wearing glasses, get some prescription sunglasses, because if not, you're living wrong. It's just different. So. I go out. We. You know, he takes so Ryan takes the boat. He's driving a boat and he takes the pontoon halfway across the water to where our dock is for us to get the jet skis. So he takes us off. There's like 20 minutes. So, again, Modelo, beer, jello shots. We already in. So we get to the other dock. He drops us off right when he drops us off. I open a bottle of Jack. I don't know why I do that, because literally Ryan's like, yo, it's probably not the smartest thing for you to do when you're about to go rent a jet ski. It's probably not the smartest thing to do when you're about to go into the office to rent the jet ski and they already see you taking a shot before you jump on the jet ski. I said, this is true. I probably shouldn't do that. And I kick one back anyway. So <laughs> after that, go on there. They have you sign like every waiver to rent the thing. It's like, all right, yeah, if you drown or if you cause damage to the boat, deductible this, deductible that. If you're missing anything, you're missing, you're signing your life away before you even get a chance to touch the water. So I'm like, all right, cool. We sign on that, boom, 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 we're done. Like, all right, can we get to the jet ski now? So we jump on the jet ski and that's it. Now, like I said, I've been on jet skis before. I went once. And the first one I ever went to was on an excursion in Cozumel on one of those on on a carnival cruise, went to Cozumel. And then we went off an offsite excursion and paid like a couple couple bucks to like hit a jet ski in the ocean for a little bit of time. That was fun, but I was scared because that was the first time I'd ever been on a jet ski before. And as much fun as it was, I just felt like I, I don't I didn't know where I was and I didn't have anybody kind of like looking out for me per se, because I was in Mexico, right? So the dude that's renting them kind of just was like, all right, here, go take them. It's in the sand. So I had to like kind of push it in the water and do all this kind of stuff myself. He helped me a little bit. But if you go out too far, there's not really like a, 
if something happens, like yeah, you got a life vest and all that, but if something happens, like you're, it's over. <laughs> like you, you have to really know what you're doing or know where you're at and get some kind of idea for the surroundings. So when we did it, we only went but so far. Me and my wife, we only went but so far out into the ocean because we didn't want to go so far away where we forgot where we were. We forgot how to get back. We forgot or worse, like we fall off and nobody can come and like get us and save us. It wasn't sanctioned. It wasn't like, oh, yeah, you could blow a whistle and somebody's going to help you. It could have easily been I rented it. And oh, yeah, by the way, there's somebody drowning. <laughs> well, tough on them. Easily could have been that kind of situation. So me knowing that I'm only going but so far in this jet ski. That's the first time. The second time was in Miami, and that was a lot more structured. That was, all right, guys, follow me. <laughs> I'm going to take you to, I think it was Celebrity Island where everybody in Miami that's like up there, upscale, has like a house out there. We pretty much got to the, the shore of Celebrity Island or whatever it's called. I don't know the name of it, but that was more structured. It was like, all right, it was me, Cash, uh my wife, his wife, and me, and we're just four jet skis following this one instructor. And the most wild it was was he was like, hey, stay in line, follow me. You can zip it. I'm going to tell you where you can zip it and go. And then he was like, you can also make some circles around here. But it was like, it was it was structured like it was a training course, but it was also to the point where we can make some shit work. We can zip it and go if we needed to. All that said, we go around, we do whatever we're doing, and it's structured. So that's about it. That was that was Miami's experience. This one would be the first time that I knew kind of where I was at, where I was going. There was going to be some people that were around me that I could kind of go back to. I saw like a bridge and every like there were people around where I'm like, if something happened, I can kind of like see or go back in that direction there were like different spots and locations all across where i can kind of figure out what was going on and it wasn't like miami where it was like follow me follow this person you pretty much can do and go wherever it is that you wanted to go which is cool so with that said with the experience i think i have i'm like oh we're about to go there's a spot in there in the lake where it's like no wake. It's a no wake zone. You can't make any major splashes or have any big waves because there's other docks that are. So there's a certain point that like, hey, once you pass this point, you can gun it. Me and Wes was in that water. Wild. <laughs> the second we saw those buoys that said no wake, or whatever, we was... I had blisters on my hands. <laughs> Like my entire body was like tight because it's like you got to hold on to this thing and make sure you don't fall off. And we are going. I'm talking about this thing got up to 50 miles per hour and it's different 50 miles per hour in open water versus like driving. Like you're feeling every little bit of this 50 miles per hour. I'm like, oh, it felt like it was my first time on one of these things. I'm like, it's, it was the excitement of kind of like being on it for the very first time. I was over here like tripping. I'm like, oh my God, like the water was smooth. It was cool. I'm like, run. I'm like, yo, this is dope. I quickly remember while I'm on the water doing this, that my iPhone and my wallet are in my pocket. Not the smartest place for a shallow pocket and deep water. <laughs> Not a good combination. So I'm like, yo, I'm a, I'm a slow down because I don't want these things to fall out of my pocket. So I slow down just a little bit. I'm like, now I'm just like kind of coasting through the water and Ryan is still on the boat. So Ryan's driving his boat through the water and he's going to a specific place to dock and put it down for us to chill at. So when I'm just like, he's, I got close to the boat, he's like, yo, we're going to come over here. We're going to chill. We're going to like, I bet. So me and Wes follow him to where he's docking the boat. So we dock the boat. We sit there and we chill. And I immediately, immediately take my wallet out and my phone out. And before well, excuse me. No, I took my phone out first. I took my phone out first and I threw the phone 
off the off the jet ski onto the boat. And when I tell you I made it by like the smallest centimeter, because when I threw it, there was like a a pole or a, a beam or whatever. And it literally missed the beam like perfectly to the point where if it hit the beam, it would have knocked. Oh, man. Oh, <laughs> I'm just getting now I know how NFL kickers feel when they like, oh, my God, it's not going to make it. And it goes through. I literally had that anxiety at that specific moment, because if it hit any other place, it's hitting off the beam and my phone is done for it is in the water. It makes it and bounces onto one of the seats inside of the boat. So with that said, I'm like, well, I learned a lesson. I'm not doing that with my wallet. So I keep my wallet in my pocket and they they dock the pond, they dock the boat and we tie up the jet skis to the boat so that way we can all kind of chill for a little bit. I put my you know, I have my book bag, I put my phones, and I put my wallet inside the book bag, zipped it up, and I was like, yo, just make sure everything's good, leave it there, bet. So during that time, we're chilling. We shoot up a little bit more. We're like, yo, let's go ahead and, uh, you know, we got some more j- shots of Jack, a couple more beer, and somehow these jello shots are still going around. <laughs> I'm like, all right. So I feel like a black and mild came introduced in here somewhere, too. I definitely feel like a black and mild got introduced in here. Yeah, I think so. Wes will probably confirm. But yeah, I think it was. All right. So at this point, we took a break. <laughs> Jack, Jello shots, beer, and a black. So me, when I am vibing those things, I don't get sloppy. I don't get loud. I don't get like common drunk like everybody feels like or socks talks about. Like I don't get like plastered. I don't get like ridiculously drunk. I actually get like, I get cool. I get, I get loose. Like I'm good. Like I feel like oh I can handle anything. Like I don't I don't get loud in your face. I don't get like bother me drunk. I don't get anything like that. I'm just I get I get relaxed. I get cool. When you add all the other stuff, it gets even more intense. So I just get relaxed like immediately. And I'm like damn, we still got like an hour left before we got to turn in these jet skis. Before we jump back on the jet ski, I present my boy Ryan with a bottle of Bel Air. I just wanted to say, you know, thank you to him. Congratulations on the great work that you had while you were here at the dealership. We appreciate it. And best of luck on your future endeavors in the next uh, in the next in the next role. So shout out to Ryan, man, because one, he did um, he did phenomenal work while he was working here. But he also you know, invited us out to do a little bit of his thing, celebrate his vice, which is just being on the water. And again, something I've never done before. We'll get back to that in a little bit. Once I, you know, we celebrate, clap it up, talk him, uh, talk him up, make sure he feels good. We like, yo, Wes, we got another hour, man. We got to make, we got to make, uh, we got to make it worth it. We got another hour. We need to go ahead and riff these skis. I'm like, all right, bet. That's dope. Let's do it. I'm feeling good. <laughs> so we unwrap the, we unwrap the, uh, jet skis from, uh, from tying it up, hop back on and. I just started doing like little circles right around the boat, <laughs> right around the boat. Ryan, for whatever reason, I don't know why he says this, but for whatever reason, Ryan tells me, hey, Dustin, just remember, glasses don't float. I'm like, Ryan, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> I'm literally like, all right, what are you, what are you saying? He's like, just remember glasses don't float. I'm like, all right, whatever. I don't have anything to worry about. My wallet's on the boat. My phone's on the boat. Like I'm all the way good. I have no concerns whatsoever. I'm like, Ryan, shut the hell up. So I'd speed the hell off in the jet ski going again, like 40, 50 miles per hour. We go to one of the furthest points you can go in this lake in these jet skis mine is some for some reason faster than wes's mind you mine had like a hole in the side of it and some duct tape and like it was like zooming through the water it was going it was zooming through the water like ridiculously i don't know if i caught better water than he did but 
on the way to that point, he was following me and he had already been ahead of me for a minute. So we get to that, like that point and we just kind of looking around, we turn the boats off like, yo, this is some dope shit right here. This is, this is, this is dope. I like, I like this. I like how this feels. This feels good. Like, yeah, man, this is dope. Let's go ahead and zip it back. Let's race. I'm like, all right, whatever. So he's like, all right, let's race. I'm like, all right, cool. So we run, we we zip him on back to this bridge. And again, jet skis, 50 miles per hour in open water. You feel everything. So I ain't going to lie to y'all. I told you I'm feeling good. I'm like singing to myself in the water. I'm like not screaming, but I'm like loud. I'm over here like I'm acting like I'm at a club jumping on couches, man. I'm over here like chilling big like i'm sitting down but i'm like yo like this is no nah, 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 like singing to myself and and i don't see west nowhere near me i'm like leaving him legitimately in the water like behind like there's no i'm like it's cool ain't nothing going on here we're good so i beat him to the bridge and i like slow down and wait for him he took an extra like two minutes to get there is how bad we were going so we get to this bridge and we turn around we're like yo see them trees all the way out there i'm like yo that's further than we were just at let's go there so we probably get to the furthest outside point of this lake and i'm like all right cool let's do it we get out there and like where we just came from the bridge looks so ridiculously far it is like (laughs) it's unrecognizable almost like the bridge is like, is that it? Could it be something else? Nah, that's it. We're to the point where trees are coming out of the water and growing. And I'm like, all right, we just went really far. We look at, and I got my watch, uh, waterproof, thank God. Looking at it, we like, all right, let's head on back. <coughs> let's head on back. So now, you know, no, no fear, nothing scaring me, anything like that. I'm over here like, yo, I'm feeling too good, man. This war, like at this point, I'm starting to notice stuff like the wind is blowing through my beard. Like it's just feeling good. It's like it's free. It feels free. So now we're zipping back to where the boat that Ryan and Matt and everybody was on was docked. So. We, 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 we zoom in again. I don't think I was in that water any less than 50 miles per hour the entire time. I really don't think I was in that water less. I was in that water for my video game fans. There is a level in Crash Bandicoot from back in the day. And I think they recreated the game. There's a level where Crash's sister Coco was like hitting the water and hitting these jet skis, collecting uh, the fruit and like hitting boxes and dodging bombs and flipping off the... That was me (laughs) the second time back. I lost my damn mind. (laughs) I was over here like thinking I was just like King Jet Ski out this day. I didn't even care. So much so that now I'm hitting the, the circles. I was only hitting those when I was doing them at like 10, 15 miles per hour. I was like barely controllable. Now I'm out here doing circles at 40, 50, looking like a damn fool. I'm good, though. <laughs> like I'm enjoying myself. I'm good. I'm not even I'm like, yo, this is straight. Probably halfway, halfway of a distance left between where now I can almost kind of see where Ryan in the boat is. Now I'm like, you know what? I start feeling myself. I start getting real. I start getting real cocky, like hella cocky. I start standing up in this mug. I start standing up in the boat. I start standing up like on the jet ski, like, you know, full, like still going 50, like, hey, things good. Like I told you, I was feeling free. But all that, all that, all that Jack, Jello. Everything kicked in at the right moment. I'm standing out like, zing, 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 zing. moving through the water like it ain't nothing. As I'm approaching, <laughs> as I'm approaching Ryan's boat, 
I don't know why I threw up like an Aaron Rodgers or whatever the hell I was doing, Texas rock on whatever. I'm standing up and I like see them on the boat and they waved at me. So I hit like a little Texas thing like, yeah, or rock on whatever it was like on some cool shit. <laughs> so as I'm doing this, I'm like, well, I have to be present of mind because up close and very personal and very quickly, I see rocks. I see that I need to break really quickly or I'm going to hit these rocks. I'm going to hit this bank. I also, in my mind, see a $1,500 security deposit. Or excuse me, not security deposit. A $1,500 bill if there's any damage to the personal watercraft. Amongst other things, because that's just damage. There could be property damage if it goes up too far. It depends on how, like, 1500 is the deductible. If it's worse than that, you have to, you sign that you're paying for the whole watercraft. So with all that in mind, I immediately put my hand down from doing whatever I was doing, and I hit the brake. The way I was standing, the way the water current was going because of how fast I was going, the way I hit the brake, the turn handle jackknifed a little bit to the left. Pause that. Jackknife means it like completely popped. I said jackknifed a little bit. No, it jackknifed to the left. And my body momentum was still standing up as a jackknife. I did a complete 540 Jeff Hardy off the ladder at WrestleMania flip into the water almost instantly. Break, jackknife, boom, flip. I was on my stomach, I was on my back, and I was on my stomach, and I was like in the water, like submerged completely to the point where I'm like, <laughs> When we stopped at the boat the first time before me and Wes hit the jet skis again, I told everybody I could swim and I can. But for whatever reason, at that moment, I was good on a boat. I didn't want to go in the water. So in the back of people's mind, it probably was like, oh, he don't want to go in the water because he's saying he can swim, but he can't. He capping. I'm like, no, I can swim. I just don't want to be in the water right now. I didn't want to be in lake water. I, I, pools, cool. Certain oceans, fine. I don't care. <laughs> like, period, point blank. There are places that are known for water. Miami. Mexico. The Caribbean. Places on, places on the other side of the world that I don't know. There are places. Cali. My California people. Is water good out there? Hawaii. When you're thinking water, you're thinking places like this, L.A., Miami, the Caribbean, the Mediterranean, like you're thinking uh, Hawaii, you're thinking like these big water spots. You ain't thinking Texas when you're talking about water, period. You're not. So like when I'm saying I fell in the lake, I didn't want to go in the lake because I'm like, yo, I just felt even more. I just I would feel dirty. <laughs> That's why I was like, yo, I'm just going to be on the boat. My, I had no thought, intention, or mind to want to even be in the water. Until <laughs> I 540 Jeff Hardy flipped off that. If I had a GoPro attached to me for what happened to me, or if I had a camera that was behind me, it would have went viral with how aggressively I flipped. I had two cuts on my body from the water with how like with how hard I flipped and fell off this boat. So there's a couple things happening at this point. The biggest thing is. Where's the jet ski? Because, again, I'm heading towards the I'm heading towards the rocks. <laughs> the fifteen hundred dollars now is like an even higher possibility. Cause I'm like, yo, where where's I'm looking around and I don't have my bearings. I'm looking around. I'm like, I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't see it. And I'm like, I, right, I see it. Boom. So I start like 
aggressively hard swimming, like, whoa, 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 like, probably the heart. I haven't swam that hard since I got thrown in the water in fourth grade during like YMCA or Boys and Girls Club training over that summer. <laughs> I hadn't swam that hard since. And I'm like, I'm feeling it in my chest, my arms, my neck, my back, legs. Like I'm going through this water because I'm determined to make sure that this jet ski does not hit the bank. I finally get my hand on it on like the last, last swing on my right hand. I finally get my hand on it. Boom. I catch it. I'm like, all right, cool. We got it. And I'm like, all right, there's like, there's like a thing you flip down that says do not step on to get on a jet ski. I stepped on it. I don't care because at this point I got to get on it. So I get on it and I'm like, all right, cool. I get mounted. I'm back. You know, people on the boat are not looking at me like I done told you stop doing that. I told you not to, you know, you, you got too wild. You got too crazy. You got too cocky. Da, da, da. I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm like, I'm laughing at myself now because at the point it's like, all right, cool. I fell in like, <laughs> Uh, all right. I got the boat. Now I'm like, how do I start this thing? Because, you know, the key is attached. You have part of the key that's attached to you and then you clip it on. It's like a magnetic thing. And if you fall off the boat, the magnet pops off as a signal to stop the jet ski from like continuously going and running the engine. So I'm like, all right, cool. I'm like trying to figure out how to start this. All right, cool. So I find the key. I put it back on there. Cool. I hit start. I'm like, yo, thank God. <laughs> Thank God I didn't have my wallet and my phone on me at this moment. I'm glad I left it on the boat. But very quickly, I remember and think of something else. Right now, it's looking real bright outside. It's like really bright, like 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock in the afternoon, daytime. can't see really either it's kind of blurry i'm like i was seeing everything real clearly the waves the trees everything was looking pretty good but for some reason i can't really can't really see it's kind of blurry right now <laughs> i start looking around i'm like my fucking shades. I don't have my fucking shades on. <coughs> my shades are gone. <sighs> so now. I'm trying to drive this jet ski. With no clear vision whatsoever. <clears throat> I can't see at all. I'm blind. <laughs> I'm blind now. I'm like, I'm trying to keep up with Ryan and his boat. Because at this point now, it's like, oh, we have to go back. Where we were and where we stopped, there was about 25 minutes that we had to drive in, well, maybe not that long, maybe 10 or 15 minutes in boat time that we had to drive to get back to the marina to drop our jet skis off and another 10 minutes to go from where the uh, jet skis were to go back to where the boat was so we had two drop offs that we needed to do within a 30 minute period i'm over here like oh my god i'm just happy my wallet and my phone are in the boat just to put it in perspective obviously i wanted those back so i went to lens crafters and obviously get an eye exam and everything like that. And I'm like, hey, you know, I lost these on the jet ski. The clerk is like asking, of course, for the story. I'm like, well, you know what? I'm going to tell the story to my listeners. <laughs> See what they think. And I tell her the story. And I'm like, OK, how much is it or how much did I pay before? Three hundred and seventeen dollars gone. <laughs> I was like, oh, boy. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get him again. And this time we won't. <laughs> this time we won't lose him. It literally what makes me the maddest about the whole situation is when I got my pool shoes that I had on. 
that I bought the day before, there were literally like the things you can attach to the back of your sunglasses to attach them to your neck. So if they fall off, you won't lose them. I ignored it and didn't need it. <laughs> sure enough, did. Finally get back to the boat, get back to the dock. Ryan drives me back. And luckily, I had my frames on in the car. I put my glasses back on and I could immediately see everything right away. I say about a Matt, say about a Corey, Dante, Wes, DD. And before Ryan, before me and him dap up and leave, he's about to go someplace else. But he taps me on the shoulder. I'm like, hey, man, I had a good time. Hey, thanks for everything. Thank you for everything back and forth. He's like, hey, what did I tell you? I said, you told me a lot of things, right? What you talking about? I said, glasses don't float, big dog. <laughs> so, hey, Ryan, you were right. <laughs> I'll give you the benefit. You were right. Thank you for taking me on the boat, but you were right. Anytime you have an asset over a certain amount of money, you probably want to go ahead and protect it and keep it. But one other note I wanted to bring before I end this show up, because I want to tell you all that story. But one other note I wanted to bring to y'all is just, hey, one of the things I saw was in that whole thing was perspective is crazy. It's a couple things in that story that like, no, number one, what you could have lost versus what you lost. It would have been a lot more hell for me to have to replace everything in the wallet and replace a phone and the contacts and the messages than for me to just lose the shades. And I can get that back very easily. Probably still financially a pain, but I could still get it. Number two, perspective is crazy. We seeing all the tree lines, we're seeing all the houses, we're seeing all these expensive layouts and everything like that. And I'm like, damn, I want to get a house like that. I want to get cars like that. I want to have ocean front property like that, land like that. And I kind of feel myself getting like, damn, this is on the way back after I lost everything or I lost my shades. I'm like, damn, man, I want to get all this, man. This is nice. And on the way there, when I could see, I'm looking at all this again. I'm like, damn, this is nice. And I'm like, you know what, Doesn't shut up. Like, what you have, and this is the lesson, what you have a lot of times is enough. Or what you have is good for your situation. Because as much as you're like, yo, I want to buy this house, there's somebody that A, wanted to rent a jet ski, B, wanted to have friends that can get them onto a boat that they've never been on, and C, can lose a $300 pair of sunglasses and not even care about it just to say, A, I'm going to go replace those next week, next day. Like it's nothing. You may want something else. But people may even want what you have. And you got to make sure your perspective stays in line and just make sure that, yo, count your blessings and look at what you really got. Because what you have and what you do and what you bring to the table is probably something that people around you would really want. And would really love and appreciate to have. So make sure you keep that perspective fresh in mind. And lastly, man. The boat was full of people that work with me. People I've worked with for a couple months here, a couple years here. And it did not once feel like a work event or something where it's like you had you had to be there. It felt like an obligation. It felt like free fun, just a good time. So the last point is just for leaders. If you have events like that with your team and you do stuff like that with your team, you just have a good time, good vibes and make everybody feel welcome, good, feel, feel, feel included. That's the sign and character of a real strong, solid team culture. If you haven't done or if you don't do that often, always try to find some place over the course of the quarter, over the course of the biannual, over the course of the year where you're taking your team out and giving them a good time because that can make such a huge difference in the culture and performance of your team. So, of course, I ended with a note like that. 
I didn't do the fragrance of the day because I don't have it on me, but the fragrance of the day was uh, Club de Nuit by Armaf. It is a Creed Aventus clone. If I wear Creed Aventus, ultimately it's because it's like a black tie event somewhere else. But if I want to still smell like Creed and just be, you know, around in the workplace, something like that, I'm going to throw on the Armaf club de nuit i will put the bottle in on episode 15 on my next episode i'll put the previous fragrance of the day for episode 14 and episode 15's fragrance but all said that is the end of scale speaks episode 14 again thank y'all so much for listening watch like subscribe share anything you can do to help the platform we greatly appreciate it we're gonna keep hitting you with more podcasts we're going to come back even stronger than we were before because now we got everything set up that we need. We're starting to get the space right. We're starting to get the podcast right. We're starting to get the, 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 the technology right. We're starting to get all this good to the point where, yo, this is something that you could be proud of. So, again, thank you all so much for watching, liking, sharing, subscribing. This is episode 14 of the Scale Speaks podcast. So, until next time, my brothers, sisters, people. Peace.